Well, the federal government is slamming a U.N. report which says far too many Canadians are going hungry. The health minister is calling the U.N.'s right to food envoy ill-informed, accusing him of making conclusions from afar. But the envoy did spend time here last year, the invitation of the government. Now, as Margot McDermott tells us, his critical findings are being dismissed outright. Tiffany Mamakizik volunteers at the Winnipeg Harvest Food Bank. There was a time she also relied on this place to survive. When you're on the street, you don't actually have a choice on what you're going to what you're going to have to eat. 900,000 people rely on food banks every month, part of a growing number of Canadians who can't afford to eat, according to the UN's Right to Food envoy. When Olivier de Scooter was here last May, he went to half a dozen cities, some reserves, and also spoke to northern and aboriginal leaders. He was clearly dismayed by what he saw. And today we have a large number of Canadians who are unacceptably too poor to feed themselves decently. The Conservatives dismissed him then. Today, his final report took aim at government policies that he says make things worse. Married? Eliminating the long-form census means it's not clear how many poor Canadians need help. Scrapping the wheat board, he says, could lead to monopolies and higher prices. And a new EU trade deal could stop buy local food policies. Food groups have been saying all this for years. There's no reason for any child in Canada to go to bed hungry at night because their parents can't afford to buy them food. That is unacceptable anywhere in the world, but it's particularly unacceptable in a country as wealthy as Canada. The scooter came to Canada under a standing invitation for UN officials. His work has clearly touched a nerve. I will not accept the report uh, from a UN rapporteur that studies from afar and the recommendations forward would not be affordable for Canadians. Whenever someone tells the Conservative government something that they don't want to hear, they attack the messenger. The report says Canada should bring in a national food policy and make access to food a constitutional right. It says this country can't preach human rights around the world when too many of its own people are going hungry. Margaret McDermott, CBC News, Ottawa. 11 million pounds of food went through Winnipeg Harvest Warehouse last year, helping to feed the more than 55,000 Manitobans who rely on food banks each month. And a new report from the United Nations says governments need to do more to get those numbers down. The demand isn't slowing down at Winnipeg Harvest, and for many Canadians, food security remains out of reach. Just ask go. Tiffany Mamakizik. Every two weeks I get, my, get, a, get a pickup of my own, uh, which I take home. Mamakizik's mom was born in a rural community. And she's not alone. Last May, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food visited Canada, including a stop at Winnipeg Harvest. He says First Nations people living off reserves face, quote, increased food insecurity in comparison to the average Canadian household. We were basically told, stay on the reserve. The government will get you what you need. This morning, via the internet, Olivier de Schuter spoke about his report on food security. He says the number of Canadians depending on food banks is increasing. Canada is, is failing um, at least parts of its population. But the call may fall on deaf ears. Ottawa blatantly rejects the report. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a one-sided report and you know, has no credibility in my view. But David Northcott does agree with the report. He'd like to see all Canadians have a legal right to food. Let's make it a legislated part of law that every citizen in Canada has the human right to food. A sentiment shared by Don DeMeo, who lived on social assistance for four and a half years. I don't think we need handouts, although we're grateful for what Winnipeg Harvest is doing here. But actually, we'd just like to see it in the budget. The shooter also said he'd like to see the minimum wage take into account the increasing cost of living. Adil Halim, CBC News, Winnipeg. The Conservatives have gutted measures and help for the most vulnerable by, in, in, by eliminating the long-form census and dismantling Canadian Council of Welfare. Implementing the recommendations coming from the UN Rapporteur would have a significant impact on all Canadians with a $48 billion tax hike. Canada needs a strategy to combat hunger among First Nations people and people on social assistance, according to a new report today from the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to food, Olivier Deschuter. 
he's been in Canada before, and he's a controversial figure here. Here's the hot sheet on his latest report recommending that Canada create a national food strategy. That strategy should outline levels of responsibility between federal, provincial, and municipal government. The report was critical of the government policy changes to the UN. The UN says, quote, undermine access to food, like getting rid of long-form census and killing off the Canadian wheat board. Why is the UN saying Canada's decision to cut the census at long form and the wheat board is hurting poor Canadians? Does Canada need a national food strategy? Should the UN be meddling in domestic policy? How much would this kind of program actually cost? Let's debate this in the foyer of the House of Commons. Joining me now is Kelly Leach. She is hey, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Labour, Libby Davies, is the NDP's health critic, and Carolyn Bennett is the Aboriginal Affairs critic for the Liberal Party. And Kelly Leach, all right, what do you make of the UN call, the rapporteur's call for a national food strategy? Because, you know, so many First Nations people, uh, so many people are, are, are living on, uh, depending on food banks across this country, and we need a national food strategy. Well, Evan, you know, every year Canadians and the Canadian government provide significant funding to UN uh, initiatives, whether those be in poverty or to fight hunger. And it's, it's concerning that they don't take those funds that Canadians are so generously donating and utilize them in the opportunities in, in countries that truly, truly need them. But let's be clear on what occurred today. The Minister of, of uh, Health was very clear in the House of Commons. She had an opportunity to speak with the repertoire. Um, he did not even mention that in his report, that uh, he had met with herself and other northern uh, ministers. And the facts are very clear on what's happened over the last number of years under this government whether it be a drop in the low income level for children that has gone from over 18% to just over 8% under our government as opposed to what it was under the Liberals, or the 55,000 children that no longer are below the low income line because of the universal child care benefit. No, but I understand, we're, I understand we're that, moving but you still forward to making sure children are not in poverty. But you still and, have 800,000 Canadians, 800,000 accessing food banks every month and you've still got one in four Aboriginal children living in poverty. So is the rapporteur's so Evan, if you job... Want to talk, if you want to talk about poverty and what we're doing, the rapporteur should listen to the facts. The facts are that before 2006, over 56 Canadian... 56% of low-income families with a single mother were in poverty. Now less than 21%. Those are the facts. Yeah, but and the, the rapporteur... I'm giving, you the, the for, rapporteur on, I'm giving you the facts, though. I'm just wondering... the rapporteur yeah. should take the time, as the minister said, yeah. and listen to the facts so that they can actually report appropriately on what's happening happening within our country. But why if can't they take taken that time, I think that the rapporteur would come up with, would be, have put I, forward I, I something move. very different than what he decided to do, because let's be very, very candid. The minister was very straightforward. She'd put forward a number of, of, of items to him, ha, as had northern ministers, people who understand our country, people who are standing uh, on okay. the ground in northern but, Canada, but, but I, I and mean, he chose not to do that. we say here, I, I'm just going to, let, let me just stick to the facts here, let me, uh, and let me move to Libby Davies. Food bank use in Canada since 2008 is up 31 percent, all right, 31 percent. So does Canada need a national food strategy or, as Carolee says, have, has the government done enough to start reducing that? Well, of course, we've got, um, we've got almost a crisis, uh, and in some communities it's a, it's a life and death death crisis. Uh, the UN report is a significant report. It's only controversial because the minister completely dished it uh, when it first came out and attacked the messenger, which I, I find just quite shocking, and has come out with this astounding figure of $48 billion, wherever that comes from. But anybody who's involved in this issue, Evan, whether on the front line in a food bank or in an advocacy organization, groups like Food Secure Canada, uh, there are over 50 groups across Canada today who listened to the report being delivered in Geneva. They know what's going on on the ground. They know that we have a serious problem Problem. Uh, the fact is, but should they, be, do, should they be talking to us about? Uh, is it the UN's job to talk to Canada about, for example, the, the Canadian Wheat Board? When Canada, as the report says, does contribute generously to the World Food Program, and should they be looking more, spending their money looking at international aid as opposed to commenting on domestic policy here in Canada? 
Well, I think the UN rapporteur reports on what he heard, and based on his observations and his fact-finding mission, he gives us a full report on what's lacking and what's needed in Canada. And I think everybody in this country agrees, excepting for the Conservative government, that we, we have huge food insecurity in this country. We do need to have a, a food secure program. Uh, the fact that we have so many people living in poverty, the fact that we don't have affordable housing, the fact that we have people living below the poverty line, even if you're on minimum wage, so, uh, you, can't, you can't live a, a decent life. And that was one of his recommendations about minimum wage. So, I mean, either we're going to take this information seriously and make a commitment to do something, um, or we're going to actually see the situation get worse in this country, which unfortunately is the conclusion that we might have to come to, given the minister's quite shocking and well, appalling let response me, let today me move to in Carolyn the House. Let me Bennett on that. Minister Glukak says implementing the recommendations of the rapporteur in this report would cost $48 billion. She says he didn't even visit the territories when he was here last May. Let me ask you, why should Canada listen to a report from Geneva on a domestic Canadian issue? Well, because the, the rapporteur came to, to do an overview of what's going on. The rapporteur was using Canada's own reports. The Inuit Health Survey in Minister Aglukat's department says that 70% of Inuit in Canada are food insecure. This is the Conservative Party, Evan, in their last election had a food and farm policy um, commitment in its platform and it's done nothing. People are hungry. And, and you need a, a, a comprehensive food policy because certain things that you do in one department, you know, food um, rotting in a farmer's field because they can't afford to get it out, uh, hungry kids, that this, this has to be done across all government departments and all jurisdictions. So it's important to have an international expert come and say that that 70% number for our Inuit is the worst in any any developing country in the world. This is terrible. So, you know, it's a um, shooting the messenger doesn't work. The minister really um, was so upsetting to all of us. When you were, when I was in Iqaluit in June, where she says they hunt every day, guess what? You can't afford to hunt every day now in the north because well, uh, snow machines and gasoline, she's, she's got to listen to the people on the okay, ground. Okay, so, so let me just put that in the last minute. I've got Kelly Leach. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna, you know, these are the numbers. Food bank use in Alberta up from 2008 to 2012 in Alberta, 60%. In Manitoba, 57%. And then the territories, and I know Carolyn Bennett just talking about that, 73%. I mean, the point is, there is a hunger problem here if food bank use is a good measure. And then you've also got one specifically affecting First Nations people. I guess the point is, wherever this person is from, should the gov is that an acceptable level for the government or should and that would a national food strategy focus on those issues and help those people who rely on food banks? Evan, as I mentioned before, there's a number of initiatives that the government has already moved forward on in order to reduce those poverty levels to make sure that individuals are self-sufficient. So whether that be the Whitby, the working income tax benefit that's taken 1.5 million people out of poverty, whether that be the universal child care benefit that has benefited literally 3 million children. Yeah. So why, why is food bank use going up, that, though? That just explains... If, those, no if those programs are, Well, if those programs are working... Right? A, are they working fast enough? And B, why, how does that explain why food bank use is going up? Are you asking myself well, for Kelly? Yeah, Kelly Leach. Leach. Kelly Leach. Let, let, well, it's because of growing income inequality in Canada. There are more and more people falling behind. And no matter where you look, whether it's academic research, whether it's stats can, that is the plain fact and evidence in this country. And unfortunately, the government's in denial about it. I mean, the programs that Kelly speaks about, I mean, we're literally talking about pennies and a sort of patchwork programs instead of uh, national strategies, whether it's on food security, whether it's on housing, whether it's on child care. These are all basic necessities about Libby, quality as you of know, life we that have, haven't been no. addressed. And so it gets worse and worse for people. All right. That's Libby, the as you know, there is truth. a homelessness strategy that has been put in place. Not really really to to when people are spending more than 50 right, on, I can't yeah. listen to you. I got, I got 30 seconds. A real quick question, Carolyn Bennett and then Kelly Leach. I, I would also like to get that answer from Kelly Leach to the question of why food bank use is going up. Carolyn Bennett, real quick. Well, when pe so, lots of Canadians are spending more than 50% of their income on rent, Without affordable housing, you don't have the money. You have to choose between the rent and food. That's how people end okay. up food insecure. Uh, Kelly Leach, I mean, if the government strategies are working, just really quickly, 
are they working fast enough? And if they really are working, why do we see food bank usage jumping so high? Well, look, we've seen the numbers come down, Evan. We've seen the number of the, a low-income mom, a single mom, go from 56% or of the of those number of individuals living in poverty to under 20%. No, so are they respect, working? Yes, I'm, I'm talking now about the food I, bank numbers. Now do I Sorry, think, now do I, I got to interrupt that, you. The food bank usage I, is going up. It's not a debate. It's a statistic. It's a statistic from one group of individuals, Evan. Let's be very clear. Food bank, I don't think that food bank utilization is a single determinant of social determinants of health. The Canadian and we Community do focus Health on Survey, the issues. Inuit Health Survey, the so, First Nations Renewal. Sorry, can, can, Carolyn, Karen, ben, I can't hear Kelly. Let's go ahead, real quick. As I said, Evan, we focused on poverty. We're making sure that these numbers are coming down, very unlike the Liberal government that allowed them to be at these astounding levels. So we'll continue to cut taxes, make sure that we're creating oh, jobs for individuals so that people can actually have All a good quality right. of life. They're hungry, Kelly. Okay, I, I'm for, I gotta leave it there. Uh, Kelly Leach, uh, Libby Davies, Carolyn Bennett, I appreciate uh, the debate as always on the program. Thank